Hello, welcome to another episode of Barlow's TV, your local landscape and garden resource. I'm Stephen Barlow here in the garden to talk to you guys about how to prune a crepe myrtle. So here we are in the garden, I have my dad, Steve Barlow, to help me show you guys how to prune a crepe myrtle. Now this is the, something that we get questions about all season long, when to prune them, how to prune them, and what goes on. So let's talk about the season we're in right now. Right now, it is mid-April. You can do these pruning these crepe myrtles anywhere from the end of March all the way through mid-May, because they don't start to set their flower buds until mid-May, beginning of June. So you're fine pruning them. We also are doing it after this the fear of very, very cold temperatures. So we're past the time when the nights are gonna get way down in the 20s and we have longer days where it's warm out. Now's the time you wanna prune it. We don't recommend pruning a crepe myrtle in the winter time, as that's when the time they can get a lot of winter dieback. So let's get right to it here. So when we look at this tree here, I wanna show you guys something first. By, by the way, this is a Tuscarora crepe myrtle. It's a fast growing um, pink tree. And you can see it has a bunch of seed pods on and things like that from last year that a lot of birds have taken all of the, um, the seeds at. So it's a great source for um, bird food throughout the winter. So if you look here though, this is our pruning point from last year, was right here. So if you look, this tree put on a good three, maybe even four foot of growth. So you can really prune a crepe myrtle pretty hard. And that's what I'm gonna show you guys right now. So the first thing that we wanna do when we're pruning our crepe myrtle is we wanna prune off any new branches that are coming in that might be uh, rubbing up against another branch or causing there not to be a lot of light inside the tree. So Dad, why don't we pick out some branches in here that we're gonna cut off. So we have some of these like this one right here, we're gonna take this one off because that one we don't really need anymore. So we're taking off some of the some of the branches that have already been inside the tree. And we've taken off some of these in here that are kind of, so we open up the inside of the tree so we get some light in there. So we have that. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna try and take off a lot of last year's growth. Because if, what, if we just leave this tree, it's gonna get twice as high and it's gonna get something called top heavy and it's gonna split and fall down and it's just not gonna be aesthetically pleasing. So we're gonna to start to prune this tree where we're gonna almost take about a third of the growth off of it. So why don't we get started? All right. So you see here, he's taking it back to almost where we took it back to last year. He's going a little bit above it. We get this branch right here too. This is a crossing branch inside there. So you see this branch right here? We've taken this all the way back so almost where we cut it last year, we left these three laterals, and this is a good starting point from where, where this tree wants to start growing. So we're gonna get, get going and pruning this, and, and we'll, we'll get right back to you. We're just almost finished here, and I, I, didn't, I forgot to mention, but I wanna mention how important it is to have a really good pair of pruners. These are Felco pruners, these are bypass pruners, you know, I, I suggest do not cheap out on your pruners. Make sure you get a good pair of pruners. They make it much easier to cut, and it gives you nice, clean cuts on the wood. When you have a cut that's not clean, it opens the door for diseases and things like that. It's just not healthy for the plant. So we're almost done here. I wanted to show you guys here that when you have these criminals, you have a lot of these little branches. Those aren't healthy. They're weak branches for the tree. You want to make sure you get all those off. So even up and down, you want to pick, pull all those off of there because you don't need them. Even these tiny ones here, they're just not, they're not gonna be the nice strong branches they have for the tree, you see this back here. The other thing too, that I wanna make sure you guys know about, is that down here we don't have any suckers, but crepe myrtles are notorious for suckers. Those are the growth that comes out of the bottom here. You know, you're gonna get that throughout the whole season when they're growing. You always wanna go when you're out of your garden, just come through and prune them off. These are last year's suckers. What that does is it takes a lot of nutrients from the plant and it just isn't aesthetically pleasing. You like to show off this bark here. So we have this last little bit here. What do you think, Dad? I think we're all done. I think we're set. How's it look? So you guys can see, we took almost half of that tree off, a good one third of that tree off to get it look like this. And that's what you want to do with your crepe myrtle so that you get that nice big canopy on top with lots of flowers. So now we're finished up pruning it. What we want to do is we want to fertilize our crepe myrtles because what's happening is those roots are starting to suck up a lot of moisture, a lot of water, getting ready to leaf out. What do we recommend for fertilizing? I recommend Plantone for pretty much all my perennials and my trees. You know, you can even use it on all your evergreens. It's just a great all-purpose organic plant food. What I'm going to do on this tree, this is a decent sized tree. I just have a simple bag of Plantone here. You know, I'm gonna take about two or three handfuls and just throw it right around the base of the tree. Three handfuls, and then you can work it into the soil a little bit. 
And then when it rains, those nutrients are gonna leach down into the soil there. The plant's gonna take it up as plenty of fertilizer for the rest of the year. So one shot on the fertilizer and you're good to go. Thanks so much for watching this video today, guys, and good luck putting your crepe myrtles. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and like our YouTube page. Thanks so much, have a great day.